In today's video, we are going to be talking about leveraged ETFs. Now, as an investor, particularly as a beginner investor, learning about leveraged ETFs is incredibly important because if you are not aware of the pitfalls of investing in leveraged ETFs and you don't understand exactly how they work, then you could find yourself in a situation where you lose a lot of money unexpectedly. And my goal with this channel is to increase your financial or your investing vocabulary, so to speak. And in today's video, that means we are talking about leveraged ETFs. So let's get started. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what an ETF is, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And what that is, it's essentially like a mutual fund, which is a fund that invests in securities, and then you invest in the mutual fund to gain exposure to the securities. But with an ETF, it is like an exchange traded mutual fund, meaning that you can access that ETF simply by purchasing shares of that ETF. So instead of signing up with a mutual fund investment company and going through their website to deposit money into that mutual fund, you can buy shares of an ETF directly from your brokerage account. So instead of purchasing shares of something like Apple or Microsoft, which are individual companies, you can buy shares of an ETF just as easily as you could access those companies that I just mentioned. So perhaps the most popular ETF out there is the S&P 500 ETF with the ticker symbol SPY. Now what SPY is, is it's just a fund that invests in the 500 companies that comprise the S&P 500 index, and they have shares of that fund publicly traded on a stock market index, or a stock market exchange, I should say. So by purchasing shares of SPY, currently the share price is around $300. For a one share investment of $300 in SPY, I'm actually purchasing the 500 companies that comprise the S&P 500 index since I am buying a share of the ETF SPY and that fund itself is invested in the 500 companies that exist in the S&P 500. But when we go one layer deeper, we get to something called leveraged ETFs. Leveraged ETFs track a certain underlying index. And by underlying index, I mean if we are looking at a leveraged S&P 500 ETF, the underlying index is the S&P 500. If we are looking at a leveraged gold ETF, the underlying index is gold. And if we are looking at a leveraged oil ETF, we are talking about an underlying index, which is whatever oil that is tracking. Now, leveraged ETFs have one goal, and the goal of a leveraged ETF is to return a multiple of the return seen in the underlying index on a single trading day. So for example, if we are looking at a three times or three X leveraged S&P 500 ETF, and the S&P 500 index itself increases by 2% in a single trading day, then our three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF would increase by 6% on that same trading day. So by using a leveraged ETF, you can amplify the returns and earn amplified returns compared to the underlying index on a given trading day. Now to some people, this might sound like a great idea because if you are bullish on the stock market, meaning you think the stock market is going to go up, then you could invest in a three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF and you will basically triple the returns of the S&P 500 index, but only on each trading day. But leveraged ETFs are not meant to be held for long periods of time, and this is where investors get into a lot of trouble because, for example, let's say the S&P 500's annual return is about 8% annually, and you find a 3x leveraged S&P 500 ETF. And because the average annual return for the S&P 500 is around 8% a year, you might be thinking that if you invest in a three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF, then your annual return should be 24% on average. And if you can earn 24% a year and compound that over multiple decades, you will be a multi, multi-millionaire, even if you start with a very small amount of money 
up front. But the problem is, this is not how leverage ETFs work. And as I just mentioned, leverage ETFs are only designed to work on a one trading day period. And since leverage ETFs are only meant to do their jobs on single trading day periods, they are not meant to be held for long periods of time. So if the S&P 500 goes up 15% in a given year, it does not necessarily mean that a three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF would go up 45% in that same exact year. So instead of just talking about the theory, I would love to go through some examples with you to demonstrate why leveraged ETFs are dangerous when you are holding them for long periods of time and to show you exactly why that happens and why they are designed to be short-term trading products as opposed to long-term investment products. So let's get into the examples. Before the coronavirus market crash in March of 2020, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, which has the ticker symbol QQQ, hit an all-time high of $237 per share. And as I record this video, shares of QQQ are currently at $257 per share, which is over 8% higher than the all-time high that was set in February of 2020. But if we look at TQQQ, which is the triple leveraged or three times leveraged NASDAQ 100 ETF, we can see that before the coronavirus market crash in March of 2020, TQQQ hit an all-time high of $118 per share. But as I record this video, shares of TQQQ are right around $109 per share, which is over 7% below the all-time high that was set in February of 2020. Now, all we need to know here is that the NASDAQ 100 index itself, which the ETF is QQQ, those shares are actually trading near all-time highs right now and are trading well above the all-time highs that were set in February of 2020. But when we look at the triple leveraged NASDAQ 100 ETF, which is TQQQ, we see that the shares are not trading at all-time highs. And in fact, they are trading below the levels that they were trading in February of 2020. So as we can see here, if you had a passive investment in TQQQ and you invested right at the top, you have not made your money back yet. While if you would have invested in QQQ, which is just the regular NASDAQ 100 ETF, if you bought that at the all-time high in February of 2020 and held it until now, you would actually be profitable at this point while you would have lost money or still be down money if you would have invested over that same time period in the triple leveraged NASDAQ 100 ETF, which is TQQQ. If you've never seen any of my videos before, please consider liking the video if you find it helpful and subscribing and enabling notifications so that you can get my finance, investing, and whatever videos I post in the future. I would love to have you as a subscriber. So this is just the first example to show you why leveraged ETFs should not be held for long periods of time and they are meant to be used as short-term trading vehicles and not passive investments. So the second example we're gonna look at is the S&P 500 index versus the three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF. And this example is going to be far worse than the example we just saw with the NASDAQ ETFs because the NASDAQ has surged so much that the triple leverage ETF has actually caught up and almost gotten back to its pre-coronavirus highs. But in this next example, which is the S&P 500 index and the leverage ETF, the story is much worse. So let's look into it. Before coronavirus hit and the market crashed in March of 2020, the S&P 500 index reached a high of around 3,400. And as I record this, the S&P 500 index is around 3,160, which is about 7% below the all-time high that was set in February of 2020. So let's go ahead and look at the three times leveraged ETF for the S&P 500, which is SPXL. Ooh, this one's nasty. SPXL reached an all-time high of around $76 per share before the market crashed in March of 2020. And unfortunately, SPXL is currently trading around $44 per share, which is 42% below the high that was seen in February of 2020. So while the S&P 500 index itself 
has recovered most of the losses and is only slightly below the highs that were seen in February of 2020. The three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF is over 40% below the highs that were seen in February of 2020 for the three times leveraged ETF, which is SPXL. But why exactly does this happen? So let's go through a hypothetical example to understand exactly why these leveraged ETF returns vary so greatly from the actual return seen in the index product itself, which in this case is the S&P 500 stock market index. So let's say that the S&P 500 index is at 3,000 and our three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF is at 100. Now let's say the S&P 500 falls 10% in one trading day to 2,700. Since the S&P 500 index fell 10%, our three times leveraged ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index will fall 30%. So from an initial value of $100, a 30% drawdown would bring the S&P 500 three times leveraged ETF to $70. So $100 with a 30% loss gets us to a share, share value of $70. On the next trading day, the S&P 500 goes from 2,700 back to 3,000 which would be an 11% or 11.11% increase from 2,700 back to 3,000. Since the S&P 500 index went up 11%, the three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF would go up three times that amount or 33%. Now, if we took that $70 leveraged ETF share price and added 33% to its value, we would come out to a share price of $93.10. You'll notice the S&P 500 index itself went from 3,000 to 2,700 to 3,000. So over those two trading days, the S&P 500 has not lost any value. But if we look at the price changes in the three times leveraged ETF, we can see that it went from 100 to 70, which was the 30% loss, and then it gained 33% the next trading day because the S&P 500 went up 11%, but from 70, adding 33% to that only gets us to 93.10, and that means that over those two trading days, while the S&P 500 itself did not lose any value, the three times leveraged S&P 500 ETF actually lost about 7%. And in the investing world, we call this drag and it is purely mathematical. So as I mentioned earlier, the dollar value of an ETF is completely meaningless, and the only thing that matters is the percentage return on every single trading day. And because the dollar value does not matter at all when investing in leveraged ETFs or complex uh, derivatives products, as we would call these, you should not be investing in these things for the long term as they are strictly trading vehicles and not investment vehicles. So by no means should you ever invest in a leveraged or an inverse ETF and forget about it because for the most part, when you come back to check on your balance, more often than not, you will probably have a very unnecessary loss or unexpected loss relative to the index that the ETF or the leveraged ETF is actually tracking. And as I said earlier, just because the average annual stock market return is 8%, it doesn't mean that you can buy a three times leveraged stock market ETF and make 24% a year. In fact, and as we've seen in the examples in this video, it's quite the opposite. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you would like more of this content in the future. My name is Chris Butler and I will see you in the next video.